What is going on guys? Welcome back to the show. Today we got a fun one for you. We're taking the Hughes craft out guys. Strap in, buckle up. You won't want to miss it. The plan for today, I think I'm going to split up today's episode into two episodes. One of them, or the first episode, which is going to be the first half of the day, is just going to be kind of uh, scouting the river and finding some quality structure to fish out of. And then the second half of the day is gonna be us catching the fish off that structure. But uh, I also have been getting a little bit of questions, once again, on social media about how to I don't know, find fish in the river. It's not very hard, it's actually pretty easy. <sighs> but once we get out there, we're gonna talk about it a little bit and then we're gonna go from there. So uh, that's pretty much the plan for today's episode. It's gonna be a tutorial how-to on how to find some fish in the river, especially when it's at 15,000 CFS, which can be a struggle bus some days. But like I said, we gotta get out there first and show you kind of what we're gonna be looking at. So, but uh, yeah, like I said, that's the story of the day. We're gonna go out there, we're gonna troubleshoot on where to find some fish. My top three locations in the river on, or just my favorite top three locations on where to find some fish. So we're gonna get the boat in the water and start cruising around. Ooh, some of my favorite baits. Two, they're already there. We're gonna be using some of them today too, I tell you what. That's the story for the day, guys. Stay tuned for some B-roll. Here she comes. Probably the most important part of boat maintenance. Making sure your two-stroke has enough oil in it. Oh, by the way, check out removable rod holders, boys. This is a garage rod holder that you put together and put in your garage, but I put it in the boat. Removable. Yay. Not out of oil, but could definitely use some. Said should be a good day. I'm gonna check the river right now, actually. For those of you who don't know, go to Google, type in Yellowstone River flow chart. Wherever you're at in the river, I'm in Billings, Montana, so I, I go Yellowstone River flowchart, Billings, Montana. It's the USGS uh, site. Ooh, temperature dropped. We're looking at 63 and a half, 14.7, so 14,700 CFS. River's coming down, ooh, just like it should be. So, Jossie just got here. Should be a good day, boys. Let's get out there. Wasting time. We got fish to catch. Boop. the first time we've been out here since the soccer trip actually late spring right before the river got real real bad almost there there she goes just had to get her started a wee bit you got the plug in gotta make sure she's pumping water here we got a problem right off the bat we're not pumping any water eh hmm. well we're gonna figure this out real quick pull it out right. ain't pumping water it's, it, I think it's a little bit clogged or something. Gosh, this is not how I wanted to start today. Oh yeah, she's clogged up. She's clogged up, good. I actually have a tool. <sighs> good thing I'm resourceful. Drop it back in. Let's see if that worked. Looks like there's grease in it. Pull it out a little bit. I just gotta un undo it real quick. This, will, this should be a quick fix. I actually know exactly what's wrong with it, so. Try blowing in it now, eh? Yeah, there's. Blow it now? You get, you're getting at least some. It's, I can, I can feel the clog. It's probably, it's that, it's that far up. It. Suck it up. <laughs> Where'd you get something in your mouth? 
up. There was that thing in it. Yeah, like it, like it a lot. So that right there, boys, is an easy fix. Whenever you're not pumping water, just check your water line there. Could always be something clogged in there. You always wanna make sure you're pumping water. Cause if you ain't, you got a fucking problem. Pumping good now. Oh, that's real good. I like that a lot. That's how she should be. Ooh, all right, guys. Got the engine running correctly. There was just a clogged water line to the water pump. In essence, it wasn't pumping water. That's how the engine cools itself. So gotta make sure she's ready to roll before you take her out. Pretty stoked that quick fix, I tell you what. So uh, we're gonna grab Jossie here and then we're gonna get into uh, the episode for the day. So we're gonna learn some stuff today, I tell you what. We're gonna learn some stuff and we're gonna get some fish hopefully. River's looking real good, so let's go. Uh, like I was saying, the first part of the day, we're just gonna kinda go around and describe really what we're looking for as we float down the river to catch some fish. Joss, what, uh, what's one of the main things you look for as you're looking for fish on the river? A, a, a nice deep hole of slack water with some, some fast water moving past it. You're not gonna fish in the middle of the river because it's just not gonna happen like that. You, you're gonna wanna find places that have holding fish or fish stack. That's kind of the game plan for today, boys. So hopefully we can find some good spots. Like I said, river's just below 15,000 CFS, so there's not gonna be a whole bunch of spots. But as we go down here, we're gonna find some pools and other assorted structure-related items that will hold fish. So uh, we're gonna get up on plane here and find a spot. Yeah, guys, and as you come through islands on the river, you're gonna look for the back side of the, the island. It's gonna generally hold lots of slack water. Slack water, just like Josh said, fast water coming into slow water up a channel on the back side of an island. Generally holds a lot of fish, and it's generally pretty deep right there on the break. Where we were catching all those saugers at, and as you can kind of tell, it's at right now pretty much non-existent. Kind of the game plan that I like to do is drive down river or float down river, as long as you know your engine's working correctly, scout out some holes, and on your way back up is when you can fish them. Uh, so, yeah, that's kind of the game plan. Uh, Joss, we saw a couple of good ones, haven't we? Oh, there's a bunch of good holes, man. We got a lot of water right now. And from what I'm seeing is a lot of holes that I haven't seen in a long time are forming. Just because the water's so high, the holes change uh, pretty constantly, so. And from what I saw on the way down, there's been a couple spots where there's some some new shelves. I'm excited. I want to hit that sand by that big island up there. Go run some overflow channels and go walk around that beach. And like Joss was saying, one of our favorite uh, fish fishing spots is like a gravel bar that extends out with ripples. Uh, really just a killer spot all through the river. You just kind of know fish are going to be stacked in those certain spots. I think we'd get some fish today. We got some water, man. Uh, the clarity of the river is actually... Fantastic. It's pretty nice. It's off color, but uh, there's just, uh, that's kind of given right now. It's, it's not crystal clear, but she's, she's pretty clear, so. All right, guys, we'll check back when we uh, find a hole that we're going to fish here, and then we'll kind of talk about it and go from there. So I get a lot of questions on electronics, especially in the river time. Now, some of you might not use them like I do, but the way that I use them is I don't really mark fish uh, unless you're in a deep hole, like a 13 or 14 plus foot hole where you can actually mark a little bit. But generally, I'm just using my electronics, my little KVD uh, five inch hummingbird with side imaging. And I just look for structure really. Um, I'm generally finding the depth I want. And then from the sonar, you can tell if you're on rock, if it's a flat bottom. And then with the side imaging, you can call out some rocks here and there to the side. So uh, I don't use the sonar too much for anything else but that, even when I'm running it the way that we have it set up, it doesn't really <clears throat> work very well <laughs> when it's on full plane. So uh, yeah, that's what I use my electronics for mostly, for all of you guys asking. So guys, we found a little, this river's kind of weird right now. There's a lot of gravel bars that are just showing up out of nowhere that really can't fish early or late season. You're fishing all the stuff that you find in the middle of the season. The water's super high, so you gotta kind of be aware of that. This actually does look very promising, Josh. This is a good example of using your electronics to find a hole. 
Right now we're in two feet of water, which means uh, roughly three feet of water, two and a half feet of water, because the transducer does sit below the water surface. We're just coming through this shelf, Josh, show them the shelf. See how there's a little shelf that comes out there? It's three feet right here. So it's not a horrible, it's not a horrible depth. And like I said, you're not gonna mark a lot of fish when you're in three feet of water. It's just how it, it's just how it is, so. Yeah, we put the boat in reverse. Yeah, there's some rocks right there. Probably just back straight out of here. Do you want to fish this, Joss? This is something that I would fish like in early or late season. Yay, nay. How deep was it down there? It's it's three feet. It the whole way through? Up. Yeah. You can pull up on it for a sec. Get some jigs going. Yeah, this is a spot that I would fish, so. Let's do it. This is where you put the tow motor out. It is pretty shallow through here. We'll go down a little bit. It just makes it so you don't have to use a big engine. So yeah, as you guys can tell, we're we're looking at 2.8, and on the side imaging, we're getting a good reading here on the left. There's some some chunk rock, but what we're going to be looking at is fishing this ripple three feet. So yeah, it's it's somewhat decent here. I think this is a good spot to. You got a jig or anything on, Jones? Yeah, just a crankbait. I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna throw the anchor out right here. And then if we need to, we can just pull the anchor up a tide bit, take the trolling motor, buzz forward, take it from there. So I'm gonna throw you guys in the chesty. Honestly, I did just rig up some rods, but I think I'm allowed to throw kits. I want to throw kits right now. Throw kits with a gulp minnow. Gosh, that does sound juicy. Watch Joss go on. He does that a lot. I think I already got something in his gulp. There we go. Let's see that. Ooh, I actually like that a lot. Look at that, Joss. What Joss is doing is he's taking his crankbait, throwing it into the actual river as far as he can, then letting it just drift down. Uh, and then he's reeling it straight up this ripple. So it's a good way to get an extra 30 feet out of your your cast. You got a fish on? Had one. Had one, yep. And in the river, you can really pinpoint where the fish are stacked too. This would be a good drop shot spot. I think I'm throwing a uh, drop shot on, dude. I'm, I mean, drop is just so freaking. On a swim bait, I already know what I'm doing. Same thing we caught those smallies on. So on my drop shot, my Dougie, I'm gonna throw a drop shot ball with a swim bait. Already got my hook. Hook's probably not sitting as best that it could. That's sitting better. I don't know. That'll be fine. We're just gonna take this ball, probably gonna put it up. I only want a 12 inch leader here. I don't want this too far off bottom, right about there. We got a little bit heavier weight on because the current's coming up, or the current isn't come up. The, uh, it's just a fast current. And we're gonna throw one of these guys, the power bait. A power bait swim tail. Not a paddle tail. What am I talking about? Swim tail. Swim tail. I don't think that's even a thing. A swim tail. This is deadly, boys. I was talking about this last night. My favorite baits. Just take this sumbi and just nose hook it ever so slightly. You saw one jump? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Watch this. This is getting beat up right here. Throw it into the current. Actually, I should probably throw it a little higher than the ripple. Oh, I just had a bite. 100% bite. Then you just slowly drag it on the bottom. And then you watch your line, and if you see it go anywhere, oh, that, there's a bite, gosh, on, oh, did you see that? There's fish in here. There's small ones, I think. This is a big bait. This is a real big bait. You throw it out there in the current, you drift it. You want to drift all the way down on, oh, you want to drift it all the way down. And then you'll start ticking, ticking rocks, and then you start your, your pull back. The back. The back two slots have impulse minnows. There, throw it some line. I think I got, yep, I got something on. Oh, dude, it just, it just, you feel it. Ding, 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 ding. On, yep. On. on. Itty bitty, just an itty bitty. I got, like, I, ooh, better. This is a better one. So, I mean, he just came off. I do like those impulse minnows. I got some saugers on them. Okay. Well, from what I'm seeing, too big of bait right here. I need a downsize, which is fun fish on already calling it maybe a little two inch impulse minnow wouldn't hurt too uh blue might really stand out very nicely like i said earlier guys way you're fishing this is just nose hooking it nose hook everything yep right in front of me but yeah these fish are gonna start eating this just need to downsize a, a bit a tad watch this fish on i knew there was little bitches down there fucking nibbling you can actually see them jumping i think i need a little more weight <sighs> Oh, on. There we go. There we go. Shiner. That's, I knew there was something down there biting. They're all top, they're all top shelf right now. Like I said, guys, we're looking for these, these rock ripples that just jet out into the river, you know, and they, they carry at least, 
Oh, that's a 50 yard ripple. This guy smoked it right in the snoot. I hate these fish. Ooh, I read it in the eye. Yeah, drop shot strikes, fish number one. Little one. I told you they were idiots. It's just a simple nose hook. I think that's, I wanna say a one eighth or a quarter ounce weight. Oh, wow. On? Yeah, pretty much. They're actually hitting on this side of the, the, the wake, not foam. Like I was telling you guys in the top five baits, that blue, blue and silver. Gosh, it's good. Yeah, there's, I can see fish jumping all through here. This makes me think that, that gravel island is just loaded with fish. I think. Fuck, he's nibbling. There we go. I let him, I let him eat it. He went ding, 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 ding. And then I set the hook. It's a shiner. Watch it be a sauger or something. 100% shiner. Ah! I hate losing my swim baits. I think that was my only blue one. And then those shiners, oh, I tangle you up a little bit. Well, time for a new swim bait. You caught them deep, didn't you? Oh yeah, they're all out there. Yep. Who already, guys? That was kind of a little example for you uh, of us coming down the river, finding a spot we like, cruising over a few, deciding this is one we wanted taking the electronics, coming through, making sure it was the right depth. Even though it was a tiny bit shallow, she still produced. Uh, right now there's just shiners in this hole, a giant school of shiners it looks like, so uh, nothing too sporty, if you know what I'm saying. I know I got some shit on the uh, Sagra video because somebody was upset that I didn't recognize a moon eye or a gold eye. Calm down. They're all shiners, guys, so. Either way, uh, that's a little demonstration of how to find some fish on the river. That's gonna wrap it up for this episode. Uh, the next episode is the second continuation of this day. We're going to actually go try and hammer some smallmouth or sog or whatever wants to bite. So uh, thanks so much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you on the next episode.